Buon pomeriggio, benvenuti. Good afternoon and welcome everybody. A year ago, we lived the important experience of the meeting with the exhibition, which is still on in a shorter version. It is touring in Italy and the rest of the world as put together by the Sant'Hijon Orthodox University on the martyr of the 21st century, the martyr or the Orthodox Church. Today's meeting includes the presence amongst us um, His Excellency uh, the Bishop Antemon, whom I'd like to welcome most warmly on behalf of you all. Before introducing the Bishop, uh, I'd like to say that these meetings, are that, as you probably realize, are not one-off, but rather are part of a series. Indeed, we are not just uh, paying lip service to our respect for orthodoxy, but these meetings have become the representation of an ecumenical approach. As a matter of fact, our meetings are steps in a process, the process based on that intuition that was Father Giussani and then by Pope John Paul II, based on which what we need is learning. learning from the experience, from the sacrifice, from the lives of our brothers living in the East. This is not but an addition to our Christian experience as we live it in our cities, in our workplace, uh, or in our churches. We talked about breathing with two lungs. Father Giussani have always said that without the East, our experience is diminished, is belittled. Well, this is not based on strategical worries or political strategies, but rather it is part and parcel of our friendships, of a friendship, of a common effort, of lending a year one to another so as to get to know each other. His Excellency the Bishop Antelimon decided to make this journey on a very solemn day because, yes, it was an important holiday, an important celebration, and this in itself is synonymous of the opening, the flexibility, the desire to sacrifice so as uh, to meet us. The gentleman who's sitting next to me, he is not just any person in the Russian Orthodox Church. Everybody's familiar with uh, um, his name, His Excellence, uh, the Bishop Pantelimonian, who's um, vicar of the holy of his uh, holiness of the patriarch of moscow and he's going also to uh, talk about the most important hospital in the city now i'm not going to refer to all what he has achieved all the charity and love actions uh, that he has been carrying out throughout Russia thanks to his leadership. And this, by the way, is uh, something which is very little known about the action which is carried out by the Russian church toward uh, the Russian people, irrespective of uh, uh, their social level of belonging 
Mm, charity uh, is certainly part and parcel of the Russian church. In this uh, very hall, we heard reference to justice and the principle of uh, uh, free of charge, of gratitude, of generosity was referred to. Father Gisani reminded us that loving, being able to love our neighbors uh, is the best thing we have. And there's an example, an image that I'm sure you're all familiar with the image of the uh, tenth chapter of the religious sense, if I were born this instant with the conscience that I have now, the first thing I would do is to feel wonder and awe before the very existence of things. There's another image in other books uh, of his in the Book of Charity. You can really live like this. Uh, imagine if it's just a little embryo which is developing uh, in the womb of uh, its mom could have conscience about all this dynamic. The embryo would realize that all what is in existence, all the development of uh, its small being depends on the blood, on the life of uh, its mom. We uh, are in at the image of God of the same nature, and this need, this uh, requirement we have to feel love is something that is part and parcel of ourselves. There's nothing which is more beautiful, as Father Giussani was saying, there's nothing which is most difficult, even. I very much appreciate uh, uh, this title, Learning to Love which is very much in harmony with all the meeting, with all the edition of the meeting, the church which is going out there, it is uh, leaving behind what is certain, what is uh, taken for granted, to go out there and learn. But having said as much, I'd like to give the floor now to His Excellence, asking him, how can you learn to love? Thank you. Buongiorno. Good afternoon. I'm very grateful to you all for inviting me to take part in this meeting. I'd like to uh, talk with you uh, about a key thing, i.e. love. Love uh, with a capital letter, which is God himself, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are here today to speak uh, about love uh, with a, a small letter, uh, uh, the love of human being. We are not going to speak about the fact that God uh, is love and not only love of God for us. We'll speak of the love uh, of men for uh, other uh, men. I have four daughters and when they were young they loved uh, very much uh, to uh, dig uh, small hides. They used to dig a small hole and they used to hide something beautiful in there. Little flowers, colored stones, sweet papers. Then they uh, closed the hole with a, a piece of glass and they covered that with uh, soil. And only uh, my uh, daughters knew where that uh, treasure was hidden. Then they came to me and, and told me uh, the secret. And I was uh, going with them uh, to share this uh, secret joy. They removed the soil and uh, I used to admire the new beauty in their little hides. For many, uh, uh, for many people, uh, and for years, uh, life 
is uh, boring and grey. We all love mysteries. We uh, like uh, to uh, discover uh, the riddles. Would like to share secrets. There are things that it would be better not to know, but there are also secrets uh, uh, which, if not known, would prevent us from uh, finding happiness. Knowing the mystery of love is the uh, purpose of human life. Unfortunately, during childhood, many could not meet the love of their mothers and fathers. Often so, as adolescents, they suffered because uh, they had no uh, preferred friend. How many people all of a sudden uh, realize that there's no love in their uh, marriage? How many parents uh, suffer because they are not loved uh, by their children? We are able uh, to love, but sometimes we are not aware of that, and we, are not, we cannot achieve what is the essence of human nature. When confessing people, I hear about the inability to love. There is always someone complaining about loneliness. They uh, admit that they uh, offend other people. They get angry and they are not able to bear with their uh, relatives or parents or children, uh, the wife or the husband. Some uh, cry, some try to do something, but they don't know the secret of love. And this is the subject of my presentation today. I don't think I know it that fully, but I know where uh, uh, we can learn and the person who can teach us how to love. Well, first of all, love in the family. Once in Italy, at the uh, Venetian Museum of the Scuola degli Schiavoni, I was reminded uh, of uh, something which happened to St. Augustine, and uh, they also um, gave a, a shell as a gift. So uh, I took it with me, and I want uh, to show it to you. You, uh, many uh, of you already know that anecdote, but I would like to tell you once and again. While St. Augustine was uh, going to a place where he was supposed to explain the mystery of the Holy Trinity, he saw a child sitting uh, uh, on the shore, was uh, collecting uh, water from the sea and uh, was pouring the water with a shell into a hole. What are you doing, guy? And he said, I wanted to collect the uh, sea water and put it into the uh, hole. So St. Augustine uh, said, this is impossible. And the uh, uh, boy uh, uh, said, it's easier for me to pour the water or the whole sea in the hole that you, uh, Augustine, discover the mystery of uh, the Holy Trinity. And he disappeared. That was an angel uh, sent by God. In order to understand uh, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, uh, uh, theologians use different analogies taken from uh, the world created. Some show the image of the Holy Trinity in the sun and in the light. St. Augustine uh, thought that uh, the uh, structure of the uh, human soul was similar to that of the Holy Trinity. Memory, mind, thought, knowledge, will, love. St. Basil the Great uh, proposed a similar analogy by using the rainbow because the same light is always equal to itself while having many colors in the same uh, time. Some think that the uh, best way to uh, describe the Holy Trinity is the family, husband, wife and son. I am afraid that uh, our fellow contemporaries uh, can only perceive this image with their minds. Indeed, it's very difficult to find a family where there is a perfect love and there is a terrible disaster in the world whereby families are being uh, destroyed. I know that young persons still nourish the idea that they want to create a happy family. In Russia, uh, forming a happy family is the first priority for girls and the second one after career 
uh, for uh, guys. Unfortunately, uh, p people, well, they get in love, they marry, and then uh, a destruction process starts. And in Russia, uh, Half of the families uh, separate. For example, in 2013, in Moscow, uh, there were uh, 92,843 uh, weddings and uh, 42,385 uh, uh, divorces. We think that love means uh, that there is someone who loves us or when we like someone, and many are looking for that love. People appreciate the beauty of the people of the other uh, sex, the sound of their voice, the shape of the body, the light in the eyes, uh, a beautiful scar. But this is not love. This is a natural attraction uh, for people of the other uh, sex. Uh, uh, usually in the other sex, we find the features that we don't have. Uh, men like femininity, and uh, women like masculinity. But this is not love. Love is the availability to make sacrifices, the desire to make the other happy, the availability to bear the other, uh, his or her defects, weaknesses, and imperfections. And this does not simply mean bearing these things in silence with hatred and irritation, but with a hope that things can change to the better. It's the availability to help the other to uh, uh, mature morally and uh, to perfect uh, spiritually. Uh, this is the loyalness uh, to another person. This is the basis for love. But if uh, in a family we are not able to live while multiplying love, then feelings can change and what people call love can get added. In the past, we used to say that uh, marriage is a school of uh, virginity. Uh, this idea has been abandoned. I asked some uh, students of high school in Moscow what that was. Many of them, uh, I've never heard that word, and nobody could explain well, its meaning. It's an integral knowledge, an approach uh, to uh, face man and the world, which are rarely encountered. Uh, uh, love can be unreasonable because of sensuality for flesh, and this is the basis of uh, relations in a family. Uh, uh, spouses would like to uh, feel pleasure uh, from uh, intercourse, but they don't want to have children. Family uh, goes in ruins because uh, human beings have forgotten God, or better said, they know the term God, they believe in Him, in an unknown God uh, uh, who created the earth and then had forgotten it. Uh, they don't believe in the man, uh, in the God made flesh, the one who came to the earth to die for human beings and to resurrect uh, the God who ascended to the heavens but is still on the earth. Uh, and uh, without uh, aspiring to God, we cannot learn how to live with the others. If uh, God uh, uh, is made uh, to play second fiddle, or rather, if human beings live outside uh, the uh, design of God and divine love, well, how can he or she be able to love? It's like the uh, prodigal's son who was rich uh, because he had the uh, assets of his father, but he was outside the house of his father. He lost everything that he had, and he uh, was uh, ready to live uh, like pigs. The life in God, the desire to stay with God, the search for God, well, this is what uh, helping human beings to learn and love. 
Outside that, a family can be a family, an alliance of people who are suitable or necessary one to the others. But a family where people sacrifice everything they have for their others and they educate children uh, in love, uh, well, uh, that's a family because without God, uh, there could be no family. Uh, the church where I am a parish, uh, uh, weddings uh, are uh, events uh, and we share the joy with the uh, newly married and we have relatives, friends and uh, parishers. The friends prepare slideshows on the uh, story of the couple, on their childhood, some play music, uh, others do short performances. Hence weddings are always something joyful for everyone. Now uh, we meet twice a month uh, to pray together with all people who'd like to uh, create a happy family. Uh, we uh, sing uh, together the uh, wonderful hymn Akathistos uh, to uh, Jesus and uh, we uh, recollect the uh, uh, earthly life of Jesus Christ and we pray him to have mercy on us. Then uh, we say a special prayer uh, for those who want to form a family. After the, uh, the office, uh, spouses who had married for many years meet the young persons and they tell them how they met, the difficulties that they had in living together, how they overcame them, how they educated the children and answer their questions. Besides uh, couples, uh, uh, we also have a, a priest attending uh, the meeting. This is a, a picture of a group of uh, priests who have a lot of children. We have Father Alexander with the children. Uh, uh, this is a, a big family uh, with about uh, 50 people and they meet uh, together. So the uh, priests indeed know uh, the members of the family directly and they help uh, young persons going beyond the problems that they have in their marriage. So these meetings are a, a form of school of life for young persons who want to have a family. This is another priest with his family. Let's speak about the love for others. Uh, there are two trends in today's world. On the one hand, uh, we see that uh, love is getting impoverished. Parents abandon their children. Adult uh, son and daughters forget about their elderly parents. I asked a nurse uh, in uh, Great uh, Britain uh, what has changed in the field of medicine in Great Britain. She said that uh, we can better treat people but uh, we no longer have the relationship we used to have with uh, the uh, sick people. Uh, now um, doctors and nurses are less sympathetic with the sick. The same is happening in Russia, maybe it's happening also here. In big cities there are so many people that they simply try to ignore uh, all the others. They travel on public transport, they drive along the roads as if there was nobody around them. Maybe if something bad happens, they might help each other. Sometimes uh, people at war belonging to the same faith or the same denomination, they uh, lose their uh, human spirit and they kill uh, the others. There are other people who try to implement the commandment, love uh, the other. For example, the community of Sant'Egidio in the Catholic Church, all the volunteers of the Orthodox uh, service called uh, uh, Piety in Moscow. Uh, this is a, a, a mass organized for the beggars, the homeless in San Francisco. There are about 10,000 volunteers working there. There are uh, many beds. Uh, and the, these people can sleep 
the holy sleep while the Mass is being celebrated. These are people sleeping in tents while we celebrate the Mass. These people who help those who uh, are uh, really poor, well, they want to help them. Every Sunday in the church, uh, uh, someone is asking to help us as a volunteer. Some help the uh, people in the elderly people home, others help disabled children, others uh, do some uh, fixing works in people who have no money to pay for the trade and so on. I'd like now to show you a short video clip illustrating how uh, our sisters and the nurses help uh, those in need in Moscow. Сестры милосердия. Это our uh, nurses are nuns. Um, some of them are uh, married, others are single, and they help those people in need who without them would have a very sad life. Uh, these uh, patients uh, uh, spend uh, all their lives in hospitals uh, for uh, chronic patients. They are children uh, who had been abandoned by their parents. And they spend uh, all their lives as disabled persons. Our sisters our parishers care for these people and uh, are uh, like a family, the family that these people never had. And uh, when the nuns or our sisters uh, get there, well, these patients, well, uh, it's like a party for them. They are happy because they are members of their family. They are not paid, uh, we simply reimburse uh, the travel expenses. Uh, there are uh, uh, volunteers caring for these children and young persons. And there is uh, a real community composed of these uh, sisters and nuns. They uh, work in these uh, centers, in these homes. They also meet to pray together and uh, to receive the sacraments and live uh, the life uh, of the church and its liturgy. We also have a, a rule in the community of sisters. Some of them are married. Others are not. We also have a, a, a reception center. Um, it's an apartment with four rooms. Uh, we had uh, people, uh, some sponsors, who bought that apartment. Now we are uh, renovating a bit uh, building so uh, our uh, the elderly woman could uh, be moved to that uh, larger venue. I like uh, this home very much. I always say to uh, our sisters that if I uh, got ill one day, please uh, take me uh, with you. I want to stay there and die uh, uh, with you. So my, my uh, daughters 
are always angry at me because they say, well, you have a family. Why do you want to go there? This is a hospital. Our sisters are helping uh, there too. Unfortunately, the staff of that hospital is not able to support uh, the disabled people and the sick people in all what is necessary. For example, um, there are no people who can uh, help feed uh, these people, so our uh, sisters help uh, the staff there. And we have volunteers helping uh, the members of staff. These uh, girls are uh, practicing uh, the profession. They are learning how uh, to adequately treat uh, these uh, sick people who sometimes need very special treatment. Usually, well, our uh, uh, rules are getting stricter and stricter. We know that we have to pray a lot every day in order to work effectively. We need to be uh, uh, listening carefully uh, during the Mass. because uh, um, these people uh, had uh, have a really hard job. So uh, uh, the prayer is intended to be helped to work with these people. So far, in Russia, uh, the idea is that these uh, children ha are hopeless, so it's meaningless to uh, teach them something. Luckily enough, things are changing. There are new projects, uh, and uh, we now know that uh, every child can be educated or trained to do something, regardless of their skills. The sisters uh, are very successful. There were uh, children who used to be bedridden. Now they learn to be seated, to use a spoon, to eat. So uh, their life uh, changes. They start smiling and be happy. And these children are full of uh, gratitude and they respond to the love of those people who cared for them with so much love. Now uh, there are some children uh, hospitalized in state centers. We want to create a reception home so that our sisters can care for these children and help them in their daily lives. Indeed, uh, they will be accompanied till their death. Unfortunately, in my country, when a, a, a child uh, comes of age, uh, they are moved to an adult center. That means that all the bonds uh, they had maintained uh, till that moment are destroyed. And that is indeed a great shock. In these uh, centers, well, there are uh, Orthodox churches where uh, the mass is regularly celebrated and uh, children uh, can uh, make the communion. This is the uh, moment when they delivered the holy gifts on the altar. Some of these uh, boys and girls uh, participate in the lit liturgy. Some sing, others uh, serve, but not always uh, can they abandon the institute. It is the, uh, therefore very important to celebrate the Mass there so that they can meet God within the walls of the center. 
helping uh, to help other people where we do have to do that because this is what God taught us and even if uh, we are not compassionate as the good Samaritan was we should help because uh, uh, God uh, love is a great work uh, love is a sentiment or the expression of a, a judgment when you don't have the sentiment of love but you help the uh, others, well, that is good. If you go beyond your ambition uh, in this way, uh, you uh, change your inner attitude. At the beginning, you do that with effort, but then uh, becoming um, being good comes only natural. And so, uh, indeed, you learn uh, how to care for the sufferings of others. Uh, uh, in the act of creation, God gives every man a potential ability to love, to live for others. If the God in the gospel invites us to uh, love our enemies, is because we have the skill. We can have this wonderful joy donated by Jesus Christ, which goes beyond any other earthly joy, i.e. Uh, love given for free. Uh, when uh, men do not know that joy, they cannot appreciate, they cannot find the authentic sense of life, and they make many uh, sins, and they try to be consoled in uh, meeting their uh, passions uh, not according to the call of God. They are uh, worse than beasts. How can we learn uh, love from the example of the saints? Love can be uh, learned from the example of saints. I'd like uh, to remind you uh, uh, something uh, happened, which happened to Saint Pope Saint Gregorius Magnus the Great in his cell. There's uh, pictures that were taken by my secretary in uh, Mozambique. We see uh, the uh, Mozambique community helping the poor people. There, were po there are poor people there who don't even have uh, food. So the uh, community of Santa Gilio helps them and invite people to uh, be foster, the foster family also at a distance to uh, pay a small amount of money every month, less than 30 euros per month. I uh, do believe that this is a, a wonderful program and we might uh, also take part in that program from Russia. Let uh, us move to uh, St. Gregorius the Great. Once he was in his uh, cell before becoming a pope, and uh, he was writing a, a book as it was customary for him. An angel of God, uh, looking like a poor people, uh, appeared and said, Help me, I had a ship, and uh, uh, now uh, in, on the sea I uh, lost not only uh, my assets, but also those of others. And uh, St. Gregorius uh, ordered that six coins of gold were given, and he uh, went away. The day after, the same poor person appeared, asking for help. In the end, uh, the Pope had no money, so uh, the last time the poor person came, uh, said, well, we uh, have nothing, uh, with the exception of a, a, a silver vase where your noble mother uh, sent you fermented juice. And the servant was uh, ordered to give the vase. The angel took the vase, uh, was happy, and uh, he uh, remained all the time uh, next to the saint to protect and help him. And after becoming a pope, Saint Gregorius used to sit uh, and have dinner with 12 poor people. And the table where they had dinner is still preserved in the church of Saint Gregorius the Great at the Celia. Uh, sometimes uh, God uh, put us at a test by sending us people who ask for help even if they don't apparently need. 
So if we uh, answer uh, the rule to give uh, anybody uh, what is requested, God uh, will uh, help us. There is another example of another saint, Saint Nicholas. Saint John, uh, and this is a, a, an a icon of Saint Nicholas. And, uh, I'll tell you the, uh, an anecdote of Saint Nicholas. It's a story I already knew, but. Uh, uh, was not able to understand its meaning. It's a story of a man who had uh, three daughters. He was very poor and he, he decided to send one uh, to be a prostitute, not to starve. Uh, the the uh, bishop learned about that and uh, uh, he had a purse of uh, money sent at night time through the window so that he could uh, have uh, his daughter married. I mean, if I had known that one of my parishers uh, was going to uh, have uh, uh, his daughter a prostitute, I would have gone at his house asking, don't, are not uh, you ashamed? Uh, uh, find a job. It's better to starve rather than sending uh, your daughter along the road. St. Nicholas said nothing and he uh, simply took uh, some coins and uh, had uh, the man uh, receive them in silence. And we see uh, uh, the bishop throwing uh, the coins uh, through the window. The three girls are uh, sleeping. When the first girl uh, was married, he decided to send the second to do the prostitute. Uh, I, I would say that uh, that man is a real dog. But St. Nicholas has sent some money again, and this would be repeated for the third time. And the saint wasn't reporting this uh, wicked action, this evil action, uh, but he's just helping not to, to perpetrate this sin. Obviously, not all of us have the chance to send purses filled with gold coins, but every young person, every healthy person has a chance. And there are many healthier young people amongst you, and each of you has the chance to help those in need. Because all too often, uh, people um, indeed do evil things because they're desperate and need help. Very often, I ask not just to my parishioners, but also to other priests and seminarists, do you remember, do you remember what uh, John the Baptist said to the people that came to get uh, ba baptized on the River Jordan? Now, I'm not going to test you whether you know the... Uh, Gospel, but be reminded of what happened there. And John the Baptist, to those that would come uh, to ask for uh, being christened, you remember what he said? He said that you have to bring uh, fruit that are worth it for conversion. And the they didn't know what the, it meant, or what does it mean to, to bring forward fruits that are worth it for conversion. And then he said what anybody should do. So he would say what the publican should do, what the tax collector should do. And these words could indeed be uh, addressed to all civil servants, to all public of officials. He would say also what soldiers said to do, that a time also worked as a policeman. Well, probably amongst you, there are not so many uh, policemen or pub civil servants, I did see some of those at the beginning of the entrance of the hall. But anyway, uh, the recommendation that John the Baptist uh, was given was given also to any people, just me and you, anybody. So remember what he would say to these simple people. I'm not going to test uh, who remembers that. But he would say to everybody, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. In this world, there's always somebody who has less money, less clothing, less food than we have. We are to share our money, our time, our time, our energies with them. And this is what John the Baptist said. This is what conversion is. Conversion is not just confessing oneself or um, 
It's not just asking pardon or asking for forgiveness for one's sins. Conversion is the mercy that we show in actions to the benefit of our neighbors. We are all sinners, whether we are Orthodox, Catholics, non-believers, Muslims. We are all people that need a being conversion. We are all people that need for the forgiveness of God and we can only be forgiven when we help the others. Now I'd like to talk for the love uh, for dead people. There are many fairy tales that end stating and they live long and happily and died the very same day. Well, obviously, it is not true for everybody to live long and happily, despite many living long. And not all of them um, have uh, the luck to die the very same day. One of the spouses usually um, dies first, uh, but the spouse that remains on earth obviously suffers for the uh, departure and the bereavement, but uh, love is, tr is for love is as strong as death, or love is stronger than death, and our Lord teaches how to overcome all difficulties. I believe that we should be reminded, that all young people should be reminded, uh, especially those who want to get married, that you have to get ready to the fact that uh, your wife or your spouse might not mm, die the very same day when you die, and that love is as strong as death, as the Song of Songs states, actually, uh, long love is stronger than death. Uh, as, um, St. Rose would say uh, about his brother, I haven't lost communion with you. It, the, the love has just changed shape. Earlier on, you weren't with me, but now you're always with me and your spirit is with me. Every Saturday in the Orthodox liturgy, we celebrate uh, the memory of uh, the dead people. And uh, there are some Saturdays uh, that um, when we pray a specific prayer for the dead people, and those Saturdays are called in Russia, and the uh, memories of the progenitors. In such day, we get together to pray together for our dead people, and in the church, uh, which is devoted to uh, Zarevich Dimitri uh, at the First Citizens Hospital, after the liturgy, we stop and uh, eat together, we feel joy because we know that uh, we can um, remi remi be reminded of the communion that we have with our dead people, with our dear dead people. In the Orthodox uh, Church, uh, most priests have their family, uh, their um, wives and children. This is uh, my wife and myself, actually, not looking very much like I am today, but it was me anyway, trust me. You see what happens uh, when a man uh, gets old. So I used to have a wife, uh, and then I became a bishop after my um, uh, wife was dead, uh, when all my four daughters uh, got married. Uh, my wife, Sophia, died of cancer for 25 years ago. She wasn't scared about death. She was just scared about pain. Because, you know, when in Russia, um, 25 years ago, wouldn't have so many painkillers so as uh, to relieve uh, cancer patients from pain. Uh, she was very fearful of that. But thank God, uh, she only needed very strong uh, painkillers in the very three last days. And when people would ask you, aren't you afraid about your children? Uh, and she would say, I entrust them with the Mother of God. And uh, she has never been disappointed because my four daughters have 16 children and wonderful husbands. Certainly in family life, there are always some difficulties to overcome, but we may very well say that their life, their family life is very happy. And this is certainly due to the prayers that um, her mother uh, prayed for her. Uh, three of my daughters uh, uh, who had uh, little girls had all named, her, uh, named the little girls after their mother. So there are three Sophies. And I'm sure that if my fourth daughter will have a girl, her name is going to be Sophia as well. I've never seen my wife when during sleep after her death, but my happened to one of my daughters, and apparently my my wife was telling her, "You're not praying as you should," and she was very happy, and she prayed uh, the Holy Father, pronouncing each word slowly, very carefully, and uh, my daughter was very happy um, because she had seen her mom that she had a very strong longing for. And throughout the lifetime of my daughters, um, myself and them addressed my wife, asking her to pray for us.
While my wife was close to dying, I was asked to try and help her to open a church at the first uh, mm, hospital in Moscow. A few days before she died, uh, she would say, I'm about to die, but the little church is going to open. She would say that because uh, she knew that it would be tragic for me if she died. And she was praying the Lord for him to give me the consolation of this hospital, of this church at the hospital. And when the church was opened, a um, poet, poet, a great poet, a Starich Pavel, would say, this is uh, what your uh, Matushka did for you. This is the intersection. And Matushka... Uh, is the way in Russia they call the wives of priests, where priests are called the babi batushka. Immediately after the death of my wife, I had a quite an extraordinary experience. I had suffered so much for her, and during her agony, I had prayed for her to stop suffering. But after after her death, I walked in the garden, and I stayed there at length. I felt lonely, but I felt I was involved in the other world. There were no visible images, there were no sounds, no thinking, and yet I felt very much relieved by suffering, pain, anxiety. When a person um, dies and goes to uh, God, uh, he frees her from whatever is a burden for her. And I thought that I was accompanying my wife in the shift towards eternity. At the beginning, I was really happy about her because her suffering was over. There were many friends that supported me, many parishioners. The only problem was looking at our children that had lost her mother. Then I started suffering greatly. Everybody had gotten used to her not being there, but I was suffering incredibly. I would feel like screaming uh, and uh, crying. Um, food tasted like nothing. I didn't want any, I could just see things in black and white. But then I started visiting agonizing uh, patients and that the church was open at the hospital and uh, mm, Father Pavel would say this is really good that they've opened the church because now looking at the suffering of other people you'll forget about the pain uh, your pain uh, it's very difficult you know to go forward uh, um, with one foot because I felt as if uh, I my foot was amputated after my uh, wife's death and now that uh, wound is healed and I'm very happy that my wife in the 15 years uh, between her death and the time she was Christian, uh, completely changed her life. When we met for the first time, she was an atheist. And then uh, she got christened, and uh, after being christened, she lived again for another 15 years. And, and during this time, uh, she covered a very difficult process from being atheist to being a strong believer. And uh, she led many people to faith, and many still recall her and love her. And we meet year on year on her tomb, on her name day, and on the anniversary of her death. I also experienced the death of three uh, grandchildren that were born with a heart disease that was incompatible with life. All of them lived for just a very few days. I christened them all and I gave them communion. You probably might not know that in the Orthodox Church, children do not celebrate the Holy Communion uh, when they are seven, but rather immediately after getting baptism, uh, they are communica communicated, uh, they get Holy Communion with the blood of Christ, uh, with wine. Uh, so this is again the Holy Communion given to the newborn. So, well, so I gave the Holy Communion also to my grandchildren when they, had, uh, when they were at the hospital. It was very painful to see no bones uh, that were going to die shortly suffer, but I believe that these children are now in the kingdom of heaven, and I believe that they can help us too if I ha pray for them and if I ask them uh, uh, for their intercession. Uh, they painted an icon of the Savior for me, and at the footsteps of Christ, uh, there are three small children, mm, three small new bones uh, with uh, white shirts, and these are my three grandchildren. Morning and evening I pray before this icon. And I'm quite sure that these children can pray for me. So we should be reminded that even if 
bearing uh, the pain of a friend's death of somebody dear uh, dying is very difficult. We have to consider always and be reminded that death uh, is uh, not weaker than love. We, death is just shifting to another world. Uh, when we pray for our people, our dear people who have died, we still basically preserve the connection with them. Now I'd like to talk about uh, the love with a capital letter, the love of God, and uh, we are approaching the end of my presentation. Love amongst people is but the reflection of the light of godly love. Man is not the source of love, just as the moon is not the source of light. The light shed from the moon is nothing but the reflection of the light of the sun. We learn about uh, the love of God through the world of the Gospels. And we recognize this love through the circumstances of our lives. But this love is revealed fully in the divine liturgy. The celebration is in indeed the, what we perform in memory of our Lord Jesus Christ and in a way so that we can understand and feel it, uh, he shows himself to us and as a crucifix resurrected as a sovereign and as a master, he purifies our souls um, and uh, as he uh, washed the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper and he offers us the bread of his body um, after he has suffered on the cross and he has risen to the right hand of the Father and he offers us also the sweet wine uh, which is the blood of his wounds this is what which is shed for all of us and in this celebration we give thanks to God uh, and we remember all what he has given us uh, given us and to the whole of humanity because this is, again is a sign of love for us Words, gestures, the symbols of the liturgy show us nothing but the passion of the death of the Son of Lord, of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the Orthodox Church, during the preparation of the Holy Gifts, from the major bread from the Eucharistia, which in uh, Greece uh, implies uh, what is on offer, what is offered during the celebration. And in the past, this used to be uh, the father, the, the piece of bread that everybody would contribute. But in the uh, Orthodox Church, this bread is prepared ad hoc and uh, has a rounded shape. And after this piece of bread, there's a specific knife uh, that uh, should remind us of uh, a lance. And uh, uh, with this little knife, the central part is removed uh, during the liturgy, is transformed into the body of uh, Christ. Uh, the the round shape stands for the perfection of God. And then the bread is translated into a cube, thus symbolizing uh, the kenosis uh, um, of Jesus Christ. God. Uh, Indeed, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. This part of the piece of bread that is called the lamb is further cut, cut up with a cross, uh, reminding the crucifixion of God, or Christ. When, these were, when the words are pronounced, uh, the uh, lamb of God is sacrificed. He is removing the sins from the world for the benefit of the world and, and for our salvation. And then this piece of bread is cut um, to remember um, what the soldiers did when they cross the um, bones of uh, on the crucifix. Uh, there are two metal arches uh, that are used at the uh, to remind us of the Star of Bethlehem and that are joined together to form a cross. Uh, this uh, standing for the fact that it is the cross uh, that is ex waiting for the divine newborn and that the Christ was born to suffer the passion uh, for the whole world. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 
in the liturgy some little um, parts of the piece of bread of the cake of bread are taken and here you may see she writes the little uh, parts of bread that uh, are there for the nine orders of sanctity, John the Baptist, uh, the prophets, uh, the apostles, the bishops, martyrs, the monks, Thaumaturgians, uh, uh, the confessing fathers, the saints uh, that are celebrated on the day of the liturgy, as well as the saints uh, John um, Basil the Great, and then there's a little triangle uh, reminding us of the Mother of God. And lower down at the bottom, you see two little um, pieces in the memory of those who are alive and another one in the, memory, in the memory of those who are dead. In the celebration of the liturgy, around the lamp, you have the collection of the whole church, who will be visible and invisible, facts and sinners, uh, everything is, and everybody surrounds God and is joined together in one single hall. Then some little uh, pieces of bread uh, are mm, removed from the other rounded shape of bread and they are placed on a dish. At some stage during the liturgy, the priest uh, pray with his arms risen, uh, recalling God uh, that uh, on, the cr on the cross had his arms wide open. This is the patriarch Cyril that uh, opens up his arms uh, to uh, make us remember all of the open arms arms of Christ on the church and then the holy gifts are risen before they are transformed into the blood and uh, body of God and then the priest says the thing coming from you the thing that are offered to you are for um, all of us in the liturgy, it is um, Jesus Christ who is offered as a sacrifice and accept this sacrifice. As the prayer says, you are the one who offer and is offered um, and uh, remembering the passion of uh, um, Jesus Christ, his son, we get closer to his love. And uh, after the consecration of the holy gifts, the priest says, your peace, your love. Give them to us, our Lord. Through the celebration of the liturgy, um, we are invited again uh, to be bread with the one for the others. We have to be uh, sweet wine rather than um, bitter uh, poison. There's a miracle that is explained uh, by St. Nicholas. Cabasilas, the holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ is the true food and drink of the church. The church doesn't just form these gifts in the human body as it happens with the food that is the nourishment of mankind. But the church is the supreme element and it wins. This means that uh, when we take any nourishment, uh, bread and wine, that is transformed into our body, uh, we say that um, wine is good for your blood. But when we take the Holy Communion, it is us that are accepted by God. It is us that become the body of Christ. The blood of Christ uh, washes us. We become part of his body. We become part of uh, Him. We are united to Him. Taking up a small particle of the um, body of God, we become a small part of His body, i.e. the Church. And by way of conclusion, I wish to say the following. 
I'd like to react to the question that was raised originally. How can you learn to love? Well, without being involved in this sacrament, you cannot be a member of the church. Without being involved in this sacrament, you cannot understand the mystery of why um, God uh, came to the earth. Without this uh, sacrament, you cannot learn to love one another. Thank you. Дорогие друзья, я вот хочу тоже поаплодировать вместе с вами Кате Степановой. Dear friends, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Kati Stepanovich who uh, prepared the uh, slide show and the uh, beautiful pictures that I realize had moved you and helped us uh, to uh, express uh, what I said with my uh, poor uh, words. And I say thank you very much to Kadia Stepanova. Well, uh, we have to thank you, Your Excellence, for uh, presenting us with uh, the uh, experience of your life as a man, as a priest, as a husband, and as a father. Uh, tell the, uh, your final uh, words when you uh, confessed. Uh, in solemn but simple uh, uh, words, by mentioning, to, uh, mentioning Jesus Christ. And the, these words clarify uh, the reason why there is something which uh, continue to flourish in our lives that would be otherwise impossible. Father Pradas uh, yesterday stated that uh, there is something which apparently has nothing to do with this. But without this uh, idea of uh, giving for free this gratuity, the reason why we uh, go beyond uh, limits, sufferings and sins, well, life would not be life without that. While I was um, watching your uh, slides and the uh, very uh, tender attitude uh, used in caring and hugging uh, children down to these smallest details, I was uh, reminded of a piece uh, by Don Giussani. The beginning of the 31st chapter by Jeremiah. I loved with an eternal lover, lover, love, sorry. And for that reason, I uh, am attracting you towards me. Uh, and uh, indeed, I'm sympathetic of your being uh, nothing. We are like those children. I mean, if uh, Christ uh, did not attract ourselves to him, we would be nothing. And, uh, this is one of the things uh, most present 
in my life. Uh, Giussani uh, said that uh, charity is uh, showing us the intimacy of God. And this total giving of oneself in any divine liturgy, in any Eucharistia, uh, it gives everything, all uh, his life. Um, another adb adjective is uh, important. Uh, it moved. Uh, God is warm. Is a God who cries, who suffers. A God who uh, is av available to help a man in need and. Uh, he is moved by that and he is moved by the idea that we were made for happiness and that sometimes we make mistakes we tend to resist we are like uh, prisoners of our arrogance but notwithstanding this the idea of uh, giving himself and being moved. My apologies, Your Excellence, if I say this. This is the root of our being united. The commotion of Christ who is moved because he sees that we are uh, together but not yet fully together. That's why he decides to give uh, all himself to uh, ourselves. I have a great friend uh, from Moscow, an Orthodox priest. He asked me not to reveal his name used to say this to me, we are so close and sometimes uh, uh, it seems that we are so far away. But don't worry, one day or the other in the design of God, this uh, commotion by Christ for uh, his people uh, this commotion by Christ uh, for uh, the need of men to get to know him uh, will indeed draw everything uh, away. I think that uh, what we experienced today, uh, thank, uh, thanks to you, is that uh, it's a, a, you know, a bit of taste of what will happen. So thank you very much for everything. Еще раз, да, еще раз вас сердечно благодарю, дорогие друзья. Спасибо большое за эту встречу. Well, dear friends, I also would like to thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And so uh, let's live together in the love uh, uh, for one another so we can go beyond all obstacles and that makes our life happy, shining and full of joy. <laughs>